It's late spring in Prague and music's in the air. Today we're at the Camorro Parade, which has drawn gypsy artists and musicians from all over Europe. This year's get-together comes after a number of racist incidents against some of the Czech Republic's Roma community. And we're here to meet the group, gypsy.cz. This year they carried Czech hopes at the Eurovision Song Contest, singing about a super gypsy who saves the world. This country really, really needs these kind of steps into the world to, to, to let the world know that the Czech Republic is not just a xenophobic country. I believe we can make a difference. We have become a positive example for the Roma community. Not many people thought the Roma here in the Czech Republic could do as well as we have, but now there are many young people who imitate us, who try to do the same things we do, and that's great. A gypsy CZ is not a political band, of course. We are not saying it. We are not political but it doesn't mean that we are not socially involved. Two decades after the fall of the Iron Curtain, what place do arts and culture have in the new European democracies? Let's look behind the scenes at arts in Prague. The sculptor David Czerny is seen as somewhat provocative after having roused the ire of Brussels with his controversial work in Troper, which caricatured the EU countries, he's now attacking the new Czech government and its links to communism. He believes today's artists no longer face political interference, but they do face indifference. Well, you know, during the communism, the art was the only way of how to express yourself if you were creative. That situation completely changed, of course, you know. You don't have to protest again. There is no the generation of, of the rich people who would be sort of like mm, mm, uh, satisfied with stuff and, and uh, new cars. So it's still more about buying new Porsches you know, than, than buying or taking care of a culture. <laughs> Let's move on and meet the Plastic People of the Universe, a legendary underground band from the 1970s. Jailed by the communist regime for the crime of playing rock and roll, they were one of the driving forces behind the pro-democracy movement Charter 77. years later, they can offer their assessment of modern life. <laughs> the political scene in the Czech Republic right now, it looks horribly, it looks horribly. It's a, it could be, I can say it's, it's a more mafia than the politics. deny the success of the Plastic People, their concerts regularly sell out, and not just with old-timers. Eva Turnover joined the group in 2001. She thinks the band's magic is timeless. This band really has remained the symbol of freedom. I think that, that this band addresses more and more young people, which is great. And <clears throat> I think this band has remained alternative, but in a different way. Now, it's alternative to, I don't know, commercial things. This is the Ponets Theatre. On the programme today, a contemporary dance class for children under the approving eye of one of the great figures of Prague culture. Founder of the contemporary dance festival Tanets Prague, Ivana Kreutzmanova deplores the authorities' lack of interest in the arts. Government grants have been cut and European money can't fill the hole. Also the, policy, the city policy towards, uh, towards culture. During 20 years of uh, running one of the biggest international festivals of, of contemporary dance in Eastern and Central Europe, I still don't have clear situation few months before we start about subsidies. 
and it's extremely risky because I also can finish with a big deficit and uh, the big question is who will cover it. Unfortunately, a lot of countries from ex-communist regime are struggling very, very similar way. And it's a pity because uh, once we develop a new democracy and new democratic systems, we should also develop well the cultural policies. And uh, we would be very happy if politicians will have more respect to our work. This old 1950s nuclear bunker is home to the Parukaka Club and its alternative scene. It's still fully operational in case of attack, according to Yarka, one of the club's managers. It's also one of the few places in Prague where live music can be enjoyed after 10 o'clock at night. Being able to play what you want with whom you want is the great legacy of the 70s activists, according to many of these young musicians. Politics, no thanks, they say, except when the politicians poke their noses in. To be involved here is a big thing for us, even if there's still a whiff of communism. But yeah, I would say the artists are switched on, not just in music, but in sculpture too. And I would say overall, we're pretty anti-globalist. <laughs> The Milada squat is said by its occupants to be the last in the Czech Republic. Constantly threatened with expulsion, the squatters guard their identities jealously. Free concerts and protest meetings make Milada famous among young anarchists the world over. More than a squat, it's a home of alternative culture and resistance to the established order. In Europe, I see everywhere the same, you know, the same monoculture, the same shops everywhere, the same people. All around Europe, there is like thousands of autonomous spaces, but they are one by one pushed out from the system, evicted from police, because uh, this economical political system don't want free people, which will organize themselves, their activities. They want everyone really enslaved to one thing. And this money. <laughs>